Hey folks, Dan here. Today I want to talk to you about Jack Irons, The Steel Cowboy, issue two from Wicked Publishing. Now before I get into talking about the book and giving my thoughts, again, full disclosure, I am affiliated with Wicked Publishing through the Mythoverse books, and um, I'm a backer of all things Ironverse, including Cactus Coyote or Coyote, depending upon where you live, and both of the Jack Irons campaigns. So I'm approaching this review from the point of view of an indie comics uh, colleague as well as a backer. Um, so with that health warning out of the way, let's just dive right in. So first of all, I'm going to say up front that there is an excessive amount of things to love about this book. But I also have to be up front with you and use a phrase I just overheard from my kids' um, How to Train Your Dragon TV show. Um, by which I mean this review will contain both honey and hatchet. First, though, let's talk about the honey. Uh, I don't even have to open the book to start pointing out the good stuff. I mean, look at this cover. The artwork uh, should be framed. I mean, just just really look at it. Um, it quite literally tells us everything we need to know about the setting and our main character at just one glance. We have our boy Jack here dead center. He looks uh, stoic, steadfast, strong. Uh, he's offering comfort and protection to this frail, fragile, innocent little girl here. Uh, Jack looks properly massive. He's sturdy. He's capable. He's packing a, a hand cannon here that a lesser man probably couldn't even lift, let alone fire. Uh, his hands are bigger than the girl's head. I mean, he is a hero. Um, but uh, in spite of uh, his strength, he is not the dominant figure in the page. Uh, he is, in fact, dwarfed by these four ominous disembodied mugs up here, uh, which monopolize most of the real estate. And um, he's also flanked here on both sides by devastation. Um, so this entire image is saturated with what appears to be toxic gas, and Jack is the only element of the cover that isn't. So what we have here is a ruined world pressed under the boot heel of these four monsters, and you can see what's become of the world as a result here along the sides. So Jack alone stands as the last rampart and the only hope for the helpless common folk in this horrible nightmare. Um, but we're told through the visuals alone that he might not be enough because, you know, he is utterly dwarfed by, by the misery around him. So right there, we have pretty much all the information we need to get going. Now, um, on to the interior visuals. Uh, let me just say uh, right off the bat that uh, if the line work and colors in Jack Irons number one is on a scale from one to 10 and eight, then Jack Irons number two is a 34. Uh, I'm not even exaggerating when I say that this is one of the most aesthetically pleasing comics um, in the indie sphere that I've seen since Rags. Um, look at this title page right here. Uh, see how the credits here are worked into the artwork? That's very creative and very effective at establishing the tone of the book. Um, and look at uh, look at these two pages right here. Um, I can't help but think of the almost uh, dreamlike visuals in Mad Max Fury Road with these deep blues here and these vibrant warm browns. Uh, visually, this book is a feast for the eyes worthy of Valhalla. I mean, Maxie and Steve, uh, Maxie, Maxie Dallow did the line art and uh, Steve Cannon did the colors. Um, they are just first round knockout heavyweight superstars. I mean, just look at this. A lot of this art, like the cover, should just be framed. It is so vibrant. Um, each one of the sections in this two-page spread here has its own color scheme and its own tone. Uh, excellent visual storytelling throughout the entire issue. So that's the honey. Uh, let's get to the hatchet. Now, I had similar thoughts for issue two that I expressed in my review for issue number one. Um, in that this book is called Jack Irons the Steel Cowboy, but he's not really the star of the story. The star of the story, again in issue two, 
is information, uh, like the prisoner. We want information, information. Um, in issue one, the bulk of the issue consisted of Jack recounting several of his past lives and how they turned him into the man he is today with a brief uh, narrative burst at the end where we get to see him bust out and be awesome. In issue two, what we get is 18 pages of world building before the narrative uh, kicks off. And uh, we start to follow Jack through the present storyline on page 19. Now, um, I'm going to say this. Cody, the writer or creator, the man can write. And he's crafted a meticulously detailed world. And he clearly has put a lot of thought, energy, and feeling into the setting. My issue is that, again, we get all this information up front before we even had a chance to learn much about Jack himself. Uh, for all the things I've said about the strength of the visual storytelling on the cover, what we get for almost a traditional floppy's worth of pages, uh, just like in issue one, is Jack sitting at a bar with a beer and giving us all this information. Um, when we get to Jack, though, um, starting on page 19, it is an absolute blast. Um, right from the moment we uh, rejoin him, he finds a little innocent girl and takes her into his care. Um, these two pages here, um, they tell us everything we need to know to appreciate the setting and Jack himself. I mean, it's a hopeless wasteland with one lone sanctuary, uh, one oasis, the Steel Cowboy. I mean, look at this panel. Look at this panel right here. Um, we didn't need the previous 18 pages. Uh, these two pages say everything we, uh, we need. It says it all. I mean, if the book had started right here, I would have been perfectly fine with it. Um, we're in. We're in the world. Uh, we get all the information we need. So after that, we get a really cool action scene uh, with a chase right out of Mad Max, which is freaking awesome. And then uh, Jack arrives at a town uh, run by hardened people who know him. Uh, this is where we could have squeezed in some more wor world building. Uh, and we do. She says, thought maybe famine nabbed you. Um, who's famine? Well, we don't really need to know that specifically yet. I mean, we're obviously, just from what we've seen here, we're in a terrible wasteland of a world. I mean, this place is absolutely miserable. So altogether, we get uh, 14 pages of story and 18 pages of backstory. Uh, the story we do get is fantastic. I just wish there were more of it. Like, oof, look at that page. That is just a feast. That is gorgeous. Um, I just wish there were more of this. Um, I'm going to reiterate this. The world is well-crafted, um, but we need to have something more to grab onto than a world. Now, I'm going to say something entirely subjective here, so take this as nothing more than opinion. But in my writing, what I try to do, emphasis on the word try, is to provide the world building through the action as much as possible. Uh, in the story we do get, in the latter part of this issue, we do get that. Uh, and again, um, for me, there's enough world building in the story portion uh, to draw me in. I don't need a blow-by-blow -blow history that we get in, in the beginning, especially if it's just Jack sitting down with a beer and reciting it, just like in issue one. Now, the, all this uh, first part, uh, to me, feels like it would belong in an appendix, kind of like uh, Tolkien did with his appendices, uh, which were published apart from the adventure that was being told. For me, I would have preferred it that way. Um, with all that being said, I would recommend this book with the caveat that it's heavily front-loaded on the world building, uh, which wasn't necessary to enjoy the story that comes after the world building. The story that comes after it is very strong, and again, I would have just liked more of it. Um, back here where we have the acknowledgments and some uh, commission art and some fan art, uh, this would have been a perfect place to just put a couple pages of appendix that um, more or less summarize everything we got in the first 18 pages. Um, you could read that if you wanted the details, um, and it would have been fine. I would prefer to have all this just be story, 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 like I said, and then a couple pages back here talking about the four horsemen and what they've turned the world into. Um, you wouldn't have need to tell us all that if you just would have had more showing right here. So Jack Irons issue one and two are both available digitally right now on the Wicked Publishing Store for 99 cents each. Go pick them up. I'll leave a link to that store down below. Uh, thanks for watching, folks. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.